good day class you are welcome to another study session on gst 103 last time we looked at the notable ethnic groups in northern nigeria and four important ethnic groups we had discussed we looked at the hausa ethnic group the fulani ethnic group the kanuri ethnic group and the nupe ethnic group today we shall look at the notable ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. Learning outcome. At the end of this class, you should be able to discuss the origins of the major ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. And you should also be able to outline the socio-political organization of different Nigerian ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. Introduction. In this class, we shall concentrate on a number of ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. There are many ethnic groups, but we won't be able to cover all. Just select the major ones, and we are going to concentrate on the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Bini, the Ishekiri, and the Ijo. And we take the first one, the Yoruba culture. Now, the Yoruba have been identified by different names in different countries. Basically, we can find them in Western Nigeria, the whole of the state in the uh, Southwest Nigeria. But we can also find them in other parts of Nigeria. They can also be found outside Nigeria. You can find some of them in Togo, in Benin. And we can also find some of them in North America. Specifically, we can find a lot of Yoruba in Brazil with Yoruba speaking Yoruba language and engaging in Yoruba tradition. Basically, in Brazil, the Yoruba people we are referred to as Lukumi. The early missionary referred to the Yoruba people that we call Yoruba today, they were initially referred to as Oyo. They were called Oyo people. There was nothing like Yoruba at that time. So, the earliest known account of the existence of the Yoruba region can be traced to around 9000 BC. But because the people at the time didn't have writing culture, they didn't develop out of writing for themselves. So their account was not documented. Their experience, their development, their origin was not documented but it was trans uh, it was transported uh, from generation to generation through oral uh, means but the first written account of the yoruba people was made or done by the second sultan of sokoto called sultan muhammad Belu. he was the first person to write about the origin of his, uh, of origin of the yoruba people and what did he say about Yoruba people? He said Yoruba people originated from a man named Nimrod. And he said, he claimed that Nimrod was a cursed man who ran away from Mecca while Islam was festering in the place. This account was now later appropriated by several Yoruba people, particularly the Oyo historians, who now said Nimrod was Lamurudu. And the Lamurudu was now seen as the uh, the father of Odudua. And Odudua is now seen as the progenitor of the Yoruba race. I'll take that again. Sultan Muhammad Bello, in his account, claimed that the Yoruba people originated from a man called Nimrod, who ran away from the development of Islam in Mecca. He was described as an idol worshipper and then ran away from there and then traveled down to the present uh, place known as the Yoruba land. But this account has now been modified by other people, particularly the, Yoruba, uh, the Oyo historians, who now said uh, the Yoruba race can be traced to Lamurudu, who was the father of Odudua, and that Odudua he is now regarded as the progenitor, the founder of the Yoruba race. In the account of Samuel Johnson, 
about the origin of Yoruba. He repeated virtually the same account, except that he replaced the Maka origin with the Egyptian Coptic Christians. In other words, Samuel Johnson claimed that the Yoruba race originated from same Nimrod, who was from Egypt, in this case, not from a Maka, and who was a Coptic Christian and not an idol worshipper as claimed by Sultan Muhammad Bello. So there are a lot of different other myths about the origin of Yoruba, but the most popular one was that the Odudua was sent by God to come to the earth and establish this earth. And then the place he landed when he came was the place that is today referred to as Ileife. And that while he was coming, he came with some, with some sand and a chiki. Then he spread the sand on the, on the ground and then the chiki spread the, 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 the sand. So it was that sound that now you know, uh, turned to what is called earth today. And then the earth began to expand, expand, expand up to the entire world that we are today. That is why in the Yoruba myth, it was believed that Ilefe was the beginning of the entire earth. And that all the other part of the world is an extension of Ilefe. So this is the most important account of the Yoruba origin, at least according, from, according to the Yoruba myth. What is very clear to us today is that the Yoruba people can be conveniently found in southwest nigeria they are indigenous to southwest nigeria nobody can deny that fact then the ishekiri people are seen as yoruba kings because it was believed that it's some yoruba person that uh, de uh, developed and established the ishekiri land as we we know it today so we can also find some yoruba people in some part of kwara some part of kogi in some part of middle belt they can also be found outside Nigeria. You can also find some of them in Benin, in Togo, and I've, I've also mentioned um, Brazil earlier. A sizable number of Yoruba people yeah, traveled or settled in Sudan from Maka. So if you go to Sudan, you find some black, black people whose origin was from the Yoruba race. You can also find some Yoruba in Trinidad and Tobago, in Cuba, among other places in the world. The Yoruba constitutes a homogeneous social, linguistic, and cultural group. They have cultural indices that unite them together. And the language, the Yoruba language falls under Niger-Congo language phylum. We are still going to treat this in our next class. And they share certain characteristics with other ethnic groups like the Bini, the Igbo, the Fulani, the Bariba, the Efik, the Jukun, and so So Yoruba shares some uh, similarities, cultural similarities with some of these ethnic groups. Generally, Ileife has a centralized state. Now, now we are now looking at the administration, political administration in Yoruba land. So, there was a centralized uh, public system, public administration system in Ileife. And Ileife is known for its artistic nature. A lot of artworks were going on in Ileife before, before the Western civilization, not before, because there was civilization before the coming of the whites. But before the white civilization, there were a lot of artwork going on in, in Ileife. So Ileife was a cultural and political model for virtually all other Yoruba communities. It, and it was regarded as the spiritual ancestry land of the Yoruba people. While the Oyo uh, state, Oyo, not the present state, the Oyo kingdom as it was then, was seen as the political and military system of the Yoruba land. So while Oyo was very powerful politically, then Ileife was very powerful spiritually. So spiritual accordance is given to the Ileife, 
why political and uh, uh, public and administrative accordance is also given to uh, Oyo state. The Oba in Yoruba is seen as the absolute ruler. That is the head of Yoruba political system. He had divine authority. His proclamation, his uh, directives were revered and respected. Nobody dared go against the Oba pronouncement. It's, but it's, despite this, his powers are checked. There are checks and balances in Yoruba society. So his powers, the other powers, were checked then, especially through the instrument of Oyomesi. Oyomesi was a cabinet of elders, a cabinet of chiefs, who act as the executive arm of government. So they can check the powers of the of the Oba. If Oba goes against the tradition, the rule and tradition, they can call the Oba to uh, to. They can tell the Oba and then they can warn him. They can let him know that his movement, his proclaiming, his doings are going against the tradition and custom of the people. But if he refuses, then they cannot take some step in order to ask him to either open a calabash, after which the Oba can die and then a new Oba will be appointed. Or the Oba can now have an alternative not to open the calabash but to abdicate the throne for, for them. So other instrument that can also check the Oba in the Yoruba society was the Ogoni society. We also have the Ifa divination. We also have the people. The people themselves can also, can also do some kind of rebellion against the Oba to tell the, to tell the Oba that no, they won't, they won't take some of his directives anymore and that most of his directives are against their humanity. So if this protest or rebellion continue for a while, then the Oyomesi and the Oboni and probably the, the Ifa priest can also come together and then take some position whether the Oba should leave or whether it should be given some time. So these are the different institutions or instruments that check the Oba during the, before the coming of the colonial uh, masters. So, we, we had this during, uh, so other, other chiefs, other uh, offices under Oba, we, they also, uh, the, the Oba can also have servants that can also deliver certain information to the public. If Oba wants to, the palace wants to send particular information to the entire public, then he has a servant that he can send, will carry a, a gun and move from one from one place to another place in order to send the message of the Oba. For instance, if Oru has to be uh, done in order to appease the gods of the land, then the Oba can inform, through his servant, to, can inform the entire public to make announcements from time to time to inform people that Oru will have to be, uh, get, will have to be taken at a particular time, usually it is in the night. At a particular time of the night, for a particular day, and a particular number of days, and then people are not expected to be outside during this, during this period. So these uh, are some of the things that happen during the pre-colonial Yoruba political system. So apart from the Yoruba, we have to move fast to other ones. Apart from the Yoruba, we also have the the Igbo culture, which is another major ethnic group in the southern in southern Nigeria, and they are conveniently found in the southeast, all the states in the southeast, and they can also be found in some part of Delta. You can also find them in, in other parts of um, the south south. But basically, the Igbo the Igbo land, the area is a very small area. It's not a, it's not as big as the other two, other two groups, Yoruba and Igbo, uh, Yoruba and uh, Aousa, they don't have a large, but the population is also high. So this, is, this has caused explosion. A lot of Igbo people have traveled out of their original home to settle in other places. You can find a lot of them in the north. You can also find a lot of them in other parts of Nigeria, living comfortably, living conveniently, doing their businesses, basically 
they are love they are loving people and they engage in their business lawfully everywhere they find themselves always trying to establish their presence through business through commerce and business wherever they have found themselves in the entire country so in terms of their origin there are also different accounts about the origin of the Igbo people some people have claimed that the Igbo people originated from the Middle East specifically some people have mentioned that they originated from Israel there are also different accounts but the most important account about the Igbo people is that they descended from the sky they all came down from the sky then so and they found themselves where they are today in Nigeria so in this most popular account nobody can be laid claim to be the forerunner the originator or the progenitor of the Igbo race and some people have also used this account to explain the reason why the Igbo people do not have usually a single political leader who can command the entire people to tell them that this is the way all of us will go because according to this account nobody preceded another they are all free they are all free they all came down at the same time so nobody preceded preceded one another so this that is the most popular account about the Igbo the origin of the Igbo people so in terms of their population I said it so they have a lot of population but the because of their population uh, the land the landlock then they are unable to maintain their land they have found themselves in several parts of the country so we have to quickly move to another ethnic group the Bini the Bini, the Bini people the Bini people are found basically in Edo state and there have been also there have been different accounts about their origin too one origin particularly from the Edo myth or the Bini myth one origin was that it was the the Bini the Bini people preceded the Yoruba people and it is one of the Oba of Bini that that sent one of his uh, sons to go and establish what is known today as Yoruba Yoruba land whereas another account particularly from the Yoruba myth was that it was one of the Yoruba uh, one of the Oba of uh, Oba of Yoruba uh, that went that is particularly Oromio it was Oromio that Odudu has sent to go and establish uh, the Bini, Bini kingdom. So these are d different accounts about the origin of uh, the Bini culture. But when Oromio was sent to go to an establish, um, to establish Bini, he impregnated the daughter of the Oba of Bini, the Onogi of Edo. There was no Bini. The Onogi of Edo. So this Onogi of Edo now gave birth to his son. The son was called Eweka. It was this Eweka that became the first Oba of Bini. And today they still use Oba as their as the leader of their political administration. All to today, unlike several other ethnic groups in Nigeria, unlike today, the Bini kin kin uh, kingdom, the Bini people still maintain their culture. The culture, yeah, there are there have been some changes about their culture, but we can still see a lot of presence of the culture of the Benin. The arts are still there. The artwork still still uh, still goes on in Benin up to today. So generally, unlike the Yoruba people, the Bini, the leadership in the Benin culture was a segmentary type, and it was also the type that the Igbo people used to have. The Igbo people didn't have a centralized political system. But the Yoruba people that time had a centralized political system. 
Oba was the head of the political system in the Yoruba kingdom. But in the Igbo, king, in the Igbo, Igbo race or Igbo ethnic group, there was no central political figure. The way I, I said it earlier, that because they believed that they all came from the sky. So what happened in the Igbo land was that every clan, every family has its own leader. So they have a leader of a family, a leader of a clan, and not the leader of the entire community or the entire race. It was also a similar thing that the Bini also experienced. They do not have a centralized system. Rather, they have what is called a segmentary system of leadership. That means they have three different types of family, nuclear, joint, and extended families. And each of these family types, each of these family types has its leadership. Even with the existence of the Oba. Then from here we move to Ishekiri. The Ishekiri culture or the Ishekiri ethnic group. In the Ishekiri ethnic group, it was believed that they descended from the sea god, whom they call Umale Okun, the sea god. You know that you, you remember that Ishekiri lived around a riverine area. So they believe they descended from a sea god. Well, though another account says that no, they descended from a place called Ode. And Ode is a Yoruba town in Ijebu waterside. And earlier we had said that the Ishekiri were seen as a kinsman of the Yoruba people. In a different account, one part of the Ishekiri claimed that a relationship between a particular son of Yoruba chief called Iginua. Iginua is the name of the, the son of the chief. So it was Iginua that came to the Ishekiri and established the kingdom there. So in terms of their social political organization, they also have a similar experience with what the Pini people have. The, pillars, the palace titles were like the ones that the Bini people also have. So they share similar and similar experience. And we have also mentioned that the Bini also somehow has some kind of relationship with the Yoruba people. However, why the Bini people still call their king Oba? Oba, the Ishekiri will call their own king Olu. And Olu, just like the Oba, Oba has same power, the kind of power that the Oba has. It ha he has a spiritual and temporal power. His proclamation is a law. Nobody dares to go against the proclamation or the, uh, the directive of the Olu. In terms of their social political organization, as I said, it's related to, to the Bini experience. Except that their own Oba is called Olu, then Bini calls their own Oba. So let's move ahead. We'll go to another culture now, the Ijo ethnic group or the Ijo culture. The Ijo ethnic group accounts for a large size of people in Nigeria too. In fact, some people have said after the Yoruba, the, uh, after the Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, then the next most populated ethnic group in Nigeria is Ijo, according to some people's accounts. Now, their origin, people have claimed that they emerge from Boni River because they, they are located around, around that side. So just as the Ishekiri also lay claim to, uh, to have emerged from a seagull, so also we also have in the, the Ijo culture or the Ijo ethnic group. So it was, it has been, there have been a lot of accounts about their origins. Some people say yes. They have moved from East, Eastern, Delta, Eastern Delta. They travel from Eastern Delta or from Portugal and then move to their present region. So there are different accounts, no sing, single account of their own origin too, just like we have with several other uh, ethnic groups in Nigeria. But we can find them in several parts in Delta. You can find them in, in the west of Delta, Western Delta, Eastern Delta, Central Delta. Delta. You can find the job people there. You can also find them in Bayelsa and other places. So these are the four major 
ethnic groups in southwest Nigeria. Today, we have discussed Yoruba ethnic group being the most populated in the southwest, in the south, and which can be found in southwest Nigeria and some other parts of Kwara, Edo, uh, and Kogi State, uh, as well as odd outside Nigeria, as in Togo, as in Be Republic of Bene, as in Brazil, Trinidad and Tobago, and Cuba, and the rest. We can also, we have also, we also discuss the Igbo ethnic group. We can also be found generally in the southeast, and we m mentioned the, uh, the land law that they have in the area. The land is very small and it has resulted in most of their um, uh, people to travel out of their original home scattered uh, throughout the whole of Nigeria. Then we also discussed the Ishekiri people and we try to link the relationship with the Yoruba people. One of the accounts of their origin was that it was a son of a Yoruba chief. The son was called Iginua, who went to um, to establish the Ishekiri land. Then we also discussed the Ijo ethnic group, and we also discussed the Bini ethnic group. So these are the five major ethnic groups that we highlighted and discussed in Southwest Nigeria. Thank you very much for listening.